And we are live. Hey, y'all. I am Phoenix on Purpose, and this is Purpose Not Permission. If you're new here, welcome, and thank you for watching. I apologize for being late for this live stream. I'm using some new streaming software. Um, this is my first time using this. So I've been playing around with it all day long. I did several test streams. They came out fine, but then all of a sudden at 6 p.m. when I was ready to go live, my system needed to be totally shut down and restarted. So I apologize. Uh, we're starting at 6.30 p.m. If you missed the live stream, you can catch the replay on YouTube. You can also catch the replay, uh, the audio replay on my uh, podcast. All right. So if you hit the link in my bio, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, for the replay or subscribe to my podcast on Spotify or Apple. All of the links are in my bio under my link tree. So again, thanks for joining. Uh, it says we're having trouble streaming to Instagram. If you ended it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see. All right, so I should be streaming to Twitter and let me see about Instagram. Okay, let's start now. And let's see if that works. All right, it says that I am live. Okay. Now, Instagram is only going to give me an hour. I'm streaming simultaneously on YouTube as well. So you can head over to either location. Let me check Twitter. Uh, I don't see the Twitter live stream. Let me see. Would it be under media? Again, bear with me, y'all. This is my first time doing this, um, doing my content this way. But I think this will be. Um, more condensed and a lot easier for me. I can work a lot smarter instead of harder doing my recording in multiple places and then uploading it all at the same time. All right, beautiful. So, oh, here it is. All right, there's my audio on Twitter. There we go. Doing this, um, doing my content this way, but I think this will be um, more condensed and a lot easier for me. I can so I don't want to hear the replay. So Twitter has a little bit of a delay. All right, so I'm just playing around with this format, you guys. I don't know if this is something I'm going to continue streaming in multiple places at one time. We'll see how this goes. All right, we'll see how this goes. And then I'll make a decision. All right. So anyway, thanks so much for joining. I don't expect a really large crowd uh, tonight. I don't expect a really large crowd. Um, again, this is my first time doing an actual scheduled live and I'm already 30 minutes late. So this will get better. Um, I think I'll be, like I said, doing it this way from here on out. Seems to be a lot easier. I've been studying other content creators seeing how they create their live streams and content. I like to stream live. It gives me a little bit more um, free authenticity just to speak off the top of my head and let my thoughts free flow um, and interact with you all live at the same exact time. So let me go into the comment section. I can't tell whether people are on or not. All right, there we go. All right, so if you are here or if you're listening to the replay, leave me a comment. Uh, rate my podcast on Spotify and Apple. Okay. And let me know how you like the content. So let's get into it. First of all, allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Phoenix on Purpose. This is purpose, not permission. Um, I am not someone who's here as a guru and end all be all. I do not have all the answers sway. I'm just someone with a mindset that I think is pretty strong. I'm someone who's done the work on themselves to uh, develop this strong, healthy, positive mindset. And also someone who 
um, I think has a lot to share and a lot to offer. These are my personal thoughts and opinions. They are not shared by anyone else that I represent in any professional capacity. They are my own and they are strictly for entertainment purposes. I am not someone who enjoys drama. I am not someone who uh, enjoys conflict. I am a, a person who is always seeking conflict resolution. So please don't come over here bothering me. I'm telling you right now, I'm the new kid on the block. I manage all of my social media profiles myself. I know you all like to tussle. In the comments, the internet community can be very toxic. It's highly triggering for me, this space. I have had to learn how to pull back and just learn how to observe without absorbing. Um, and it's been quite the journey for me. So here I am now. I feel like um, I think that my mind has finally re-entered my body for a whole long, long time. I was um, just in a space where I was in my body, but my mind jumped out the window. My mind left the building. I was dealing with a lot personally. If you've been following me for a while or if you've listened to some of my previous videos or previous um, podcast episodes, of which I only got through a few when I started in the very beginning uh, a few years ago. If you are someone who has been along this journey with me from the beginning, um, you all know of the things that I spoke of and the things that I was working through. Grief is a tough thing to process and uh, just reimagining and redesigning your whole entire existence is a tough thing to process. You have to go through a whole morning it's a mourning process, mourning um, who you used to be and then diving uh, wholeheartedly into who you're becoming. It's been quite the journey. So again, I'm just someone who's here to share. Hopefully my sharing and my content will help someone else along their journey in whatever capacity um, you see fit. You can take the information, eat the meat, spit out the bones. I am not someone who's requesting or asking or demanding that you follow every piece of logic or advice that I share here. So please understand the space that I'm coming from. A lot of content creators from what I see um, have movements and um are, you know, gaining cult followings of, I think, people who are broken, uh, in my opinion, people who do not have their own strong mind, people who are unwilling to do their own work to figure out who they are and what they actually want for themselves and for their own lives. And in that process, you will lose yourself and you will wind up following someone um, who can be highly influential in your decision making, and you can wind up finding yourself in a position in your own life that doesn't actually suit you. So I want to discuss the topic of relationships. Uh, like I said, these are my thoughts, my opinions. They don't have to be um, the ideologies that you take on. This is what works for me. This is how I think. This is how I feel according to um, what I've witnessed, what was modeled to me, what I experienced in my own life. Um, and what I feel works and what doesn't. Uh, modern relationships are a mess. Uh, relationships are necessary. They're literally the backbone of society, okay? So relationships uh, in all capacities are necessary. Uh, healthy family dynamics, you know, where they're non-toxic and you're able to um, have your feelings validated and feel heard and seen. Um, having a great support system, whether that be friends, um, whatever community you've uh, established around you, having um, a great love relationship, your partner, your um, girlfriend, boyfriend, your uh, fiance, your spouse, your wife, your husband, whomever that is, right? Those relationships are, are necessary. No one is meant to be an island all by themselves and human beings are not designed to be alone. So um, I would say, thanks for joining, love. Uh, if the live stream on IG cuts off, you can head over to my YouTube channel. The entire live stream will be uh, saved and uploaded again to my YouTube. Uh, I only have one hour on IG. I'm not sure how long this is going to run. Uh, so you can certainly head over. And again, thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, relationships are necessary. They're the backbone of society. Again, no one is meant to be an island uh, by themselves or alone. And I'm sure no one wants to die alone right? So there are a lot of movements 
uh, that are encouraging broken women to uh, decenter, decenter men, right? And uh, totally abandon uh, dating or uh, uh, just not providing you any hope or any positivity uh, when it comes to partnership. Uh, I feel that content and that ideology is dangerous. Um, again, everyone is free to do whatever it is they want. And I understand that um, men are the leaders, in my opinion. I have a very traditional, very old school mindset. In my opinion, men are the leaders. And according to what we're seeing, you know, according to um, these breakups we're seeing, these pop culture relationships that a lot of folks model or try to model their lives after, um, the men aren't doing such a good job at leading. So it's the man's job to do his own work, to heal himself, figure himself out, figure it out what it is that he actually wants for his life, um, break out of his Peter Pan syndrome. You know, if he's someone who is in a perpetual loop of childish behavior, doesn't want to grow up, wants to date multiple women, have a bunch of babies all up and down the internet and all back and forth across the neighborhood that he's uh, either unable to or incapable or refuses to take care of or is uh, someone who is inadequately uh, able to provide for those children, that's not someone that you want to date. You already see his reckless, irresponsible behavior. Why would you think that that type of person is going to be responsible with your heart? or be able to protect or lead and guide you properly, you know? So those are some of the things we need to think about. Number one, ladies, I would say to you, uh, you need to figure yourself out first. And that is something that is hard to hear for a lot of women. Uh, there is a, a, uh, a uh, I don't even know how you word it. There's a, uh, just a, a thing going around about women uh, that we lack accountability. Um, that we don't want to look at ourselves in the mirror and change our own behavior. Um, I would say that a lot of women, um, specifically Black women I'm speaking to, right? Um, a lot of women have adopted this loud, proud, strong, independent woman archetype um, as a mask and a shield for her hurt and her brokenness. And it doesn't serve you, ladies. Uh, a lot of women are in spaces where um, you're building your careers, your businesses, and that's great. And you're saying out loud publicly that you don't want partnership, um, that you don't want to be in a relationship. Um, so that's where you're vibrating. You're vibrating on a negative frequency, saying what it is that you don't want. But secretly, if you're still dating, if you're still out here in the marketplace, ladies, I would ask you the question, are you being celibate? How long have your legs been crossed? You know, um, are you actually decentering men or are you angry and hurt and need to actually do some healing work? So those would be my questions for you. Those, that's the number one thing. What is it that you want from life? What is it that you want for yourself? What is it that you want long term? The 20-somethings are running this internet, and I think they're running it into the ground. Modern relationships have been reimagined and redesigned in a way that they are not working because I'm seeing a lot of dynamics of role reversal. Role reversal relationships, in my opinion, do not work. A dynamic where the woman is the head of household, making more money than and or leading a man. A man's ego can't handle that, ladies, especially not a masculine man. And a lot of you ladies want masculine men. A lot of you ladies want a man who is going to uh, be strong, um, be, you know, someone who's able to care for you, someone who's able to protect you. A masculine man uh, with the, the way that the male ego is designed, they their male ego is actually quite fragile. They can't handle you treating them like a son. You know, look at a lot of these pop culture relationships that, again, a lot of the 20-somethings model themselves after, model their lives after. A lot of ladies, your behavior, your demeanor, your outward appearance and aesthetic, the way you dress, 
the way you carry yourselves, the way that you speak, the words that come out of your mouths are mimicking modern pop culture rap girls. And you're not a rap girl. You are Keisha from 54th Street, who, who is a nurse, or you have a job where you're working in an office cubicle. You are not a rap star. You are not um, a pop culture icon. For you to carry yourself that way in the streets, living your regular, everyday, normal life, trying to uh, mimic your lifestyle behind something that you aren't is ludicrous. It really is. That's why these relationships aren't working. Ladies, a lot of you ladies uh, do not care for yourself, mind, body, soul, spirit from the inside out. A lot of you ladies skip the inside part and you want to go straight to the outside, the outward appearance. You have all the aesthetics. You have the handbags, you have the shoes, the clothes, the purses, the, the hair, you know, all the jewelry, you don the outward appearance and the outward aesthetic, but you're not doing the soul work. You're not going all the way back to your childhood and unpacking your story, unpacking what happened to you, your upbringing. A lot of you ladies feel like you deserve nothing and you live with poverty mind and a scarcity mindset. You don't feel like uh, abundance is attainable to you. So you have to, you know, buy more and do more and try to make more. And the more is never enough because deep down inside, you feel empty. You feel empty deep down inside. That's where that scarcity mindset comes from, not having enough, not having enough growing up. And that is a mental conditioning and programming that is hardwired into your DNA. It is passed down genetically. I don't even, that that's something that needs deep diving and uh, really hard work to get rid of. It really is. It's something that requires a lot of unearthing um, to heal that, you know? So uh, a lot of people refuse therapy. Uh, if a lot of us Black folks would spend more time uh, paying attention to more elevated spaces there are many black people who actually do go to therapy. I hear, you know, a lot of some black folks say therapy doesn't work. You know, it's not something that black people do. I say that in air quotes, but that's actually not true. A lot of black people go to therapy a lot. Uh, like I said, if you would spend more time and pay more attention to elevated talking spaces and let go of the trash television the gossip, which is getting you nowhere in life, the, uh, you know, just the gossip blogs, the black gossip blogs online that recycle the same stories about a different person with a different name and a different face every day. Who's had a baby by who? Who cheated on who? Who broke up with who? Who got married? Who's in a relationship? Who did this? Who did that? It's never anything positive. It's all drama and chaos. And a lot of folks gravitate toward that drama and chaos because it makes you feel more comfortable sitting in your chaos. Whatever a dysfunction, dysfunctional cycles that we refuse to break out of, it makes you feel more comfortable watching that. It makes you feel a sense of normalcy. It drives me insane. It really does. It's very, it's highly triggering to me, but it makes a lot of folks feel a sense of normalcy because that's how you conduct yourself and how you live your lives every day. The fighting, the reality TV where women are going back and forth with each other, putting their hands on one another, cursing each other out, screaming, yelling. That is so toxic. It's so taxing to my system to even see things like that. I don't understand how someone can um, want to consume that content night and day, day and night, and think that you're not going to want to mimic or mirror that behavior in your own life, and then think that you're going to have healthy relationships on top of mimicking that toxic behavior. It's so dysfunctional. Uh, I really would love for Black folks to get back to a space of 
Black excellence on television, actually calling for and wanting to see Black excellence on television, actually being interested in it. You know, we say it's boring, it's this and that. I've heard things like um, there are certain, you know, entertainers and or content creators or entertainers who've now become content creators can't get jobs in the industry because either they refuse to be hypersexual on television or on social media, or they refuse to be toxic and chaotic. And that's sad that that's where we are as a society. Again, it all goes back to mindset. It all goes back to why relationships just aren't working. People can't stay together. Um, I'm going to tell you guys, you know, again, it starts with you. Starts with you. If you refuse to look in the mirror, acknowledge your behavior, take it personal accountability, and then make whatever necessary changes are necessary within you. Identify what it is that you want. What is it that you want for your life? What is it that you want from your relationships? What is it that you want in partnership? Who is it that you would like to usher into your life? What types of people? Do you want to usher into your life? What type of relationship do you want? Do you just want, uh, you know, a situationship? Are you two consenting adults who's able to actually handle that? Are you able to communicate that to the person you're in a situationship with? Are you someone who wants a monogamous committed relationship? And have you articulated that? Are you someone who wants long-term marriage? Um, ladies, if you don't have kids, you know, I would advise you before you have children by a partner, make sure you're choosing someone who is long term going to be a great parent, a great father. What dynamic, what family structure do you want for yourself? You know, these are just questions. Uh, I don't, again, I don't pretend to have all the answers, but these are the questions that I would at least start with. What do I want my life to look like 5, 10, 15 years from now? What am I doing today that's contributing to that? Or, you know, it's going to cause destruction and havoc, you know, in my life, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from today. You have to always make decisions based on tomorrow. I don't, uh, I am not someone who lives my life fly by night. I take my time. And I think about what it is that I'm doing. There's a crash out marathon on this internet, a crash out marathon. And I'm telling you the way that this internet triggers me um, and the mental space that I was in when I first got started with my content creation, I would have been on that list. I would have, in all honesty, I would have been on the crash out list uh, because I just couldn't handle it. I did not understand the space that I was entering at all. I didn't get it. Um, I didn't know I was highly triggered every time I got on this internet, highly triggered. And now I understand that, uh, this is a space where a lot of you guys need proper guidance and you don't have it. And then there are, again, a lot of spaces, content creators, uh, who are just not leading you down a healthy path. In my opinion, uh, again, we all have choices in life. We have choices. Uh, but there comes a time in your life where you have to just make decisions that are solely for you, make this make decisions that are best for you, best suited for you, not according to what anyone else has to say or how they live their lives. What I'm seeing that's being taught to you or being um, pushed and force fed to you is uh, just, I'm seeing a lot of unhappy people teach you how to, how to be unhappy with them. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people uh, with outcomes in their personal lives that they are not happy with. And then they are leading you down that same path, teaching you how to destroy yourself. So for lack of better terms, I'm just going to put it like that. Um, I think a lot of us are missing a big piece of um, what's being presented to us. And we're missing the opportunity to actually observe and learn, learn 
from other people's mistakes. Learn and study the archetypes of the people that you're observing. Study the archetypes. Listen to the mindsets. Listen to the words that come out of these people's mouths. Ladies, you have a great opportunity to observe men on this internet. Listen to how they think. Listen to what they say. Um, the first thing in a relationship, ladies, number one, all great relationships start with a foundation of friendship. Uh, if that man is interested in anything long term with you, and if that's where you are, you're interested in long term, that man will not be opposed to um, having a platonic general friendship with you, um, starting out that way to, to, you know, get to know each other, really get to know each other, take some time to just talk and be friends so that you all can uh, just, you know, see if you even really vibe, see if you mesh beyond initial attraction and chemistry. So that's first things first, friendship, and then courting, courtship. Courting and dating. Ladies, if you are dealing with a man who is not interested in courting or dating you, and you um, are overlooking those red flags, if he's trying to rush you into physical intimacy or a physical relationship, uh, and again, you're overlooking those red flags, you're asking for whatever it is that you get. Whatever outcome that you get from dealing with that man and, and tolerating that and moving forward, regardless of whether or not that man is interested in actually getting to know you, taking the time to court and date you, then you're signing up for it. You're signing up for it if you, again, ignore red flags and think that the person who's presenting themselves to you isn't who they are showing you that they are, you get what you get from that relationship or partnership. It's just cut and dry. I don't know how else to say it, but to be blunt about it, people show you who they are and we refuse to believe them. You know, um, we want someone to be someone that they aren't or someone that they don't have the capacity to be. You know, that whole Risa Tisa situation. Unpopular opinion. I don't feel sorry for her. It has absolutely nothing to do with her weight, her outward aesthetic. It has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with who she is as a person and the fact that she was so desperate for a man for no other reason other than just to say that she had a man, apparently, that she ignored Everything that that man was, she ignored who he was just to move forward and get married and say, I have a man. I don't feel sorry for, for her. I don't feel sorry for anyone with that mindset, especially when, and don't get me wrong, I only have the cliff notes. I was not going to waste however many hours of my life listening to a what was me sob story of a woman who attached, used me to her forehead, put a dunce hat on, lit a pity party cake, lit candles, threw a pity party and blew a whistle and then invited the whole internet to her party. I wasn't about to listen to that at all. Um, I didn't need to hear the whole story, like I said, to get the cliff notes. This man did not show you any of did not actually show you any of who he said he was at all. He fed her nothing but lies, nothing but lies over and over and over again. And she chose to ignore it and move forward. The silver lining for her, which I am happy about, is that she was able to alchemize that situation and turn it into uh, monetization and make something of it. Hopefully she doesn't repeat that same mistake moving forward. But ladies, I would advise you and encourage you to not, you know, the, the, the rainstorm of what happened after a lot of ladies getting on the internet with your woe is me relationship stories instead of doing the work, doing the work, just quietly observing, quietly observing and taking notes, 
learning from the mistakes of others, reevaluating yourself and your life. This may be difficult to hear. Again, I am a woman who speaks. Matter of fact, I believe in my opinion. I have a healthy mindset. I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't feel like I'm a victim of life. And I don't feel like anyone else is a victim of life. I feel like we all make either choices or excuses. I feel like, again, where it comes to accountability, a lot of women, um, unfortunately, do lack accountability. A lot of people in general lack accountability. It is so hard, I have learned, for people to just say, you know what, I was wrong. Set the ego aside. You know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah, I got it wrong. Let me try to do this over again. Let me try to correct my own behavior. That seems to be the hardest thing for people to do. Say I was wrong or really apologize with actual changed behavior. Changed behavior. There is no apology except for changed behavior. So many of us so many people um, accept the bare minimum, you know, accept the bare minimum from whomever it is that trickles into every single area of your life. If you, you accept the bare minimum from blood relatives or family members who say they love, care for you and support you. If you accept the bare minimum from friendships and you keep those friends around you, if you accept the bare minimum from your partner, your spouse, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, whomever it is, if you you accept the bare minimum, again, you care more about other people than you care about yourself and you allow other people uh, to come into your life where you're doing the absolute most and they do the least. You make it easy for people to use you. You make it easy for people to uh, handle you however they want, do whatever they want, whether or not you're happy about it, doesn't matter. You accept it. You know, this is a little bit of a ramble. This is a little bit of a rant. Um, Everything, it's all relative. It's all relative. You know, I'm not a people pleaser. I don't care what other people want from me at all. I don't. Myself, I put me first every single day, me, myself, and I, especially if you don't do anything for me. I have a house full of bills. I am not someone who is going to usher anyone into my life in a romantic sense who does nothing for me, ladies. So I'm your model. I don't have people around me who don't do anything for me. I don't. Um, And I don't mean in a way, again, when it comes to dating, relationships, all of that, flowers. I love flowers. It's not a big deal. Date, date night, dinners out, shows, you know, plays, whatever it is, whatever your interests are, whatever you and your partner or your, your, you know, friend that you're courting or the person you're trying to get to know, your boyfriend, whomever it is. Uh, whatever you all agree upon, whatever outings you like. I like uh, escape rooms, things that make you think. I'm a sapiosexual. I'm always in my brain. I'm always expanding my mind. I'm always learning, you know, reading books, wanting to gather more information. So, you know, again, I wouldn't usher anyone into my life who does absolutely nothing for me. A lot of you ladies accept Netflix and chill with strangers that you don't know. Invite strangers to your home. Go to strangers' homes. Fly out to foreign locations or different cities to go and meet total strangers without them putting in any real effort to actually get to know you, come to you, fly out to you. The man's job is to pursue, ladies. Modern society has it all backwards. If a man isn't pursuing you, he doesn't like you. If he's not willing to be your friend, date you, court you, get to know you, he's showing you that he doesn't like you. It doesn't matter what he says. His actions show that he doesn't like you. If you have family members who don't support you, who don't do anything for you, who don't show up for you, they don't care about you. Love is a verb. Care is a verb. Those are action words. 
If people aren't able to show up for you in action, they don't care about you. At this point in my life, I think I've cultivated a pretty good circle of people around me, a home girl who shows up. We have a reciprocal relationship. Everyone around me does more than me in different capacities. Everyone around me knows more than me in different capacities. I dwell in circles with people who are generally older, um, business owners, real estate investors, those who, again, can teach me things, feed into my mind, you know, expand what I have going on, you know? So I just, yeah, nothing muffins. A lot of you ladies get involved with, have babies with, date, court, marry, nothing muffins. Risa Tisa, that whole situation, that dude was a nothing muffin, nothing, had nothing going on. You ladies get with these guys who have nothing, who want nothing, who are going nowhere. Old back child support, can't get a passport. Criminal records, rap sheets, longer than a CVS receipt. No steady work history, not trying to turn his life around. They owe court costs and fines. Their financial life is in disarray. They're not trying to get it together. Credit score, probably not even on the scale, maybe a 300, if it actually scores at all. Nothing muffins, kids all over the place, all up and down the internet, all across the world, all across the neighborhood, multiple baby mamas, kids they can't afford, kids they don't take care of, kids they are not able to even emotionally provide, let alone monetarily, uh, physically, psychologically. They aren't great people, irresponsible men. You usher them into your life. Nothing muffins. You let them drive your car. You let them sleep, lay all over your couch and do nothing in your household. You got a house full of bills. They drive your car all day long while you at work, bring it back, no gas in it. They haven't filled it up with gas. They don't bring any groceries in the house. They don't take you on date, ladies, a nothing muffin. They don't have any, no career, no business, no business goals, not working on anything treat you poorly and you keep them around just for the sake of you have a man and have the nerve they cheat on you, you know, just, I I don't understand it. Uh, And then those are the type of men that you all will have a kid with and then don't understand why you wind up in child support court or you all wind up in a uh, totally toxic relationship. And and it's just, it's not working out. Instagram, I'm also on YouTube. So if the live stream cuts off on IG, make sure you head over to YouTube. The replay will be uploaded to YouTube uh, as well as the audio being uploaded to my full podcast. So subscribe on YouTube, uh, subscribe. The link is in my bio, also to my Apple and Google uh, podcast. The link is under my link tree. Um, So yeah. Ladies, you all get involved with these men who play video games all day. Apparently, that's what the youngins are doing, or even some of these older men, okay? Um, Get involved with uh, men who have no future, men who are showing you they're an irresponsible human being all across the board. And for whatever reason, you have it in your mind that you're going to usher this irresponsible human being into your life, and they're going to be responsible with your heart. And then you get on the internet and scream all up and down the internet about how you hate men and how toxic they are. That man was toxic. Yes, a lot of men are toxic. Yes, a lot of the men on the internet are toxic. A lot of the men in the comments especially are toxic because they're busy in the comments typing instead of figuring out how to get their life together. So yes, there's a lot of toxicity within men. Men need to do better. Men are the leaders. They should be the protectors and the providers, the heads of household, so that they can gain and earn the type of respect that they want from their uh, female counterpart, from a woman, right? But ladies, it's your responsibility. This is where your accountability comes in. It is your responsibility, ladies, to vet them. And that's what I mean by vet them. Talk to them. Just listen. Don't force feed them any information. You don't have to argue, debate, or go back and forth with them. Just 
talk to them, hear them out and listen. It really should only take one or two at the most conversations or encounters with someone to determine whether or not they're going to be suitable for your life, whether or not this is someone you actually want uh, to uh, mix yourself with in order to build legacy. You know, you all have to, again, you know, when you're 20 something or in your early 30s, I guess maybe it's easy uh, to make permanent decisions based off of temporary emotions, uh, get trapped with babies. Now you're stuck for life with someone, um, I guess. And, and I'm saying I guess because something different was drilled into me, right? So I want to try to drill that into you if you don't already have kids. But um, in your early 20s, yeah, that's your time to have fun. Club, see the world, party, all that. Date, you know, get it out of your system. Live, right? In your early 30s. Um, really, that's time for you to have learned the lessons. Uh, stop dealing with toxic people, toxic partnerships. It may take you some time to unpack it, um, figure out what happened and address it. But it's time out for toxicity um, at that point. And, and from what I'm seeing all over this Internet, you know, Internet culture, um, apparently that's not the case. A lot of folks do have Peter Pan syndrome. Um, and those mindsets are what's being passed down to a lot of the youth. I don't understand how anyone uh, can be all over the internet screaming and yelling, crashing out every day, saying that they're uh, trying to be a role model or an example to the youth. You are the youth. You are. You act just like them. You know, how can you expect a role model leads by example? How on earth can you expect for anyone to uh, model behind your behavior if it's toxic or change the mindset of those who really, really need it if you do the exact same thing that they do? But again, ladies, uh, when it comes to you know dating, relationships, partnerships, they are necessary. They are the backbone of society. I would say to you ladies to expand your options. I would say to you, uh, be willing to date much older, more seasoned um, and mature men. I would say to you, seek outside of the internet. I would say to you, seek outside of any sort of dating site. Um, I don't recommend dating sites at all. You don't know those people. I would say to you, um, go outside, go to networking events, conferences. I would say to you, um, spend your time in elevated spaces. Uh, so many things I want to say. Uh, again, I'm not meant in my words, and I know that uh, my words can tend to be offensive to those who. Uh, don't want to put their big girl panties on and their big, big boy, uh, boy shorts on, you know, people who want to be coddled and people who want uh, someone to hold their hand, you know, and continue to usher them uh, down a dark path. But I'm not here for that. So, again, if you want to tussle with me in the comments, know that I don't engage in uh, back and forth or toxicity. You will kindly be escorted out of the building. You can sit stage left in the little chair on the side and you can stare in the corner for a little while. And then I might consider letting you back in. Okay. Um, but I don't engage in back and forth and toxicity. Uh, that's bad energy. It's a low vibration. Um, it scares away opportunities. So I don't engage with that at all. Um, if there's anything that's offensive to anyone that I'm saying when I'm when it's not my intent. When my intent really is to uh, just be helpful, you don't have to watch. You don't have to listen. The internet is not a real place. It really isn't. I promise you. I know a lot of people live, breathe, think, sleep, drink, eat the internet. It's not healthy. 
even if you are a content creator, um, building brands on the internet, to me, it's not healthy to live every minute of your life and expose yourself in every corner, every facet of your life um, to the public, put it on public display for public consumption. You're giving the public too much power over you. You're giving other people too much say-so in your life, too many things to discuss. It ruins relationships. It ruins business opportunities. It ruins so many things. I've seen it time and time again. And if people are really watching with a critical eye, using their critical thinking, looking and seeing a lot deeper than what you're actually looking at or seeing, and you actually just sit back and think for a moment, it doesn't serve anyone to put their whole life on public display. It just doesn't. It may make you a whole lot of money, and that may be great. But look at the people who have come to their downfall and who have met their demise and those who are next in line to come to their downfall and meet their demise, those who are currently in the process of coming to their downfall and meeting their demise, who live out loud, nice and public, nice and super toxic, Super toxic, who made a lot of money, made a lot of money off of other people, treated a whole lot of people wrong. Everyone always gets their day. Everyone has a turn. We are entering, this is the the era of the divine feminine. Uh, If there's any man out there who still has nefarious intent for women and you still are hell bent on treating women poorly, um, you are going to have a a serious reckoning and an awakening. A serious reckoning and an awakening. You cannot continue to get away with treating women poorly and think you're going to have a good life. A man who um, is so broken and so toxic and so mentally sick that he doesn't know how to conduct himself other than to be abused. Basically, everyone in his path, everyone, treat people poorly at the end. No matter how many years it takes to catch up to you, that can't be someone who really expects to get away with that behavior. And ladies, what you are missing, instead of diving into every salacious detail of the story, what you are missing is the opportunity to dissect that archetype so that you don't run into it in your real life or so that you don't entertain it if you do run into it. That's a specific archetype. Someone who can't stay out of the camera. Nothing is ever enough. Take that, take that. Did he do it? He needs more and more and more and more and more. Robbing people using people because what was his real talent dancing all in the videos like what was his true talent you use other people to amass your wealth and did them so wrong you know i i I, again this won't be a space where i speak on a whole ton of pop culture topics but i did want to share my thoughts and opinions on that Um, I don't feel sorry for him either. People deserve what they get. People create their own karma. Honestly, people create their own karma. There's no good that's going to come to, I I just don't get it. Again, that's a man with Peter Pan syndrome. Don't want to grow up. You want to have multiple kids, multiple women creating multiple families. The, The good thing is that at least he did take care of his kids or so it seems, you know? But Peter Pan syndrome, don't want to grow up, don't want to get old. Do not want to settle down with one woman and actually uh, be satisfied in a household um, that you lead uh, maturely with a true um, positive role model. That man is not a positive male role model 
at all. Now his boys are apparently getting in trouble. It's a lot with that. You know, a lot of people are missing the opportunity to examine that archetype. A lot of people are missing the opportunity. People are exposing themselves and telling you who they are left and right all over this internet. And people are missing it. Ladies, you're so busy complaining about what it is that you don't want. You're ushering more of that into your life instead of going outside and creating your own life. Create what it is that you do want. So many people are, uh, ladies, if you continuously dwell and speak into existence what you don't want, you're creating more of that. Study what you're seeing. Quietly observe, watch it, learn from other people's mistakes, don't repeat them, work on yourself, work on your purpose, work on your health, your fitness, your mental wellness, your soul care work, get you a journal, write, write to yourself, write out your thoughts, correct and change your own behavior, be the best mom that you can be to your babies. Be the best mom that you can be to your kids. Get in the kitchen with your babies, you know, instead of taking all these selfies and photos with duck lips and your butt turned to the camera. Ladies, when you present yourself um, as low class, you are going to attract low class. When you walk outside of your house with a bonnet on your head and you can't be bothered to do your hair, you can't be bothered to present yourself in public um, in a a way that is um, attractive and indicative of who you are as a person. When you present yourself as low class, you get treated as low class and you attract low class. I wouldn't be caught dead with a bonnet on my head outside. A lot of you ladies do not take pride in your appearance. You wear bonnets on your head, pajamas, flip-flops. In certain neighborhoods that I have to drive to, I see it often. That's a vestige of poverty. Those are conditioned, trained, learned behaviors. It should not fall on uh, the hands or the shoulders of one person to try to change, fix, save, correct, or heal that behavior. One person can't do it. Um, It's something that I have finally gotten myself to the point where it does not bother me, honestly, what other people do. I observe, I see it. I don't care to uh, speak to it when I'm in the face of it. I don't care to speak to it. Um, I don't care to, I look the other way. I do. I look the other way. Um, it's not something, especially because those spaces I don't spend a lot of time in. So it's a temporary thing for me. Um, I don't know that that mindset can be changed. It's being forced fed down our throats every day as if it's normal. Uh, the Zeus network fosters all that toxicity. So it's breeding a new generation. It's like gremlins. You pour water on them, they multiply. It's breeding a new generation, you know, of continuous toxicity and and recycled uh, behaviors of poverty and trauma to keep you in a poverty and trauma cycle. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, whomever it is that's watching, whether or not you guys realize it, the goal is to keep you in poverty. The goal is to keep you poor. The goal is to keep you uneducated or undereducated. The more uneducated and undereducated you are, the more dysfunctional and unhappy you are, the more scarcity mindset and lack that you experience, the more money you spend, the more you boost the economy. The more you buy unnecessary things, the more you shop, the more you um, seek to mimic someone else's life, the more you want to be someone that you're not, want to be someone that you can never be, aspire to toxic role models because you have no positive ones of your own. Um, 
a lot of you, if you did not have positive role models in the home and you don't have any po positive role models that you can look to the left or to the right of you to learn uh, more healthy behaviors to model yourselves and your lives after, I would say to you, look to Lady Michelle and Obama, uh, uh, President Obama. Look to their relationship. Look to seek out her podcast. Seek out her interviews. Listen to Eric Thomas. I listen to him often. Uh, listen to the Secrets to Success podcast. Uh, follow those gentlemen. They're all married. I don't hear any salacious stories about them. They're not dating IG models. They're not sleeping around with them. I don't even think that they would ever even deal with someone like that. Um, those men seem to be, again, seem, because we only know what's presented to us, seem in the way that they speak about women, the way that they seem to treat women, because we don't know what goes on. Behind closed doors, I don't idolize anyone. I had my own personal examples growing up, plenty of them, good and bad, right? And my own life stories and experiences, a lot of them, good and bad, right? So, see, so watch the Secrets to Success uh, podcast. Listen to that. You can stream it also. Um, Black Love is a podcast. I don't know where it is now. It used to be on YouTube. Uh, I think it went to one of the streaming networks, and I'm not sure which one. It might be Stars, but Black Love. Um, Viola Davis and her husband. Her story really struck me. It really resonated with me, what she wanted for her life, what she manifested, and how it showed up for her. As soon as she was ready, it showed up, right? You can speak your life into existence. Um that's, those are examples to me of healthy relationships. There's plenty of content out there if you seek it. Stop listening to all the shoot 'em up, bang bang music. Listen to more love songs. R and B still exists. Whoever is saying R and B doesn't exist isn't searching for it. I find plenty of R and B. The music that I play for you guys on my reels, it's for you. It's for the public. It's for my brand. It's for you to show you what I listen to. I'm a model. That's it. I'm a model. The music, the foods that I eat. Yes. And there'll be more reels. My IG will be dedicated more so to uh, the cooking, all the cooking videos, the music that I listen to, um, the words that I write. All of that is for you. All of that is my offering to the world under my brand, my brand building. Every single thing that you're doing needs to serve a purpose. The people that you usher into your life need to serve a purpose. I went to a networking event the other night and I was gifted a, a new book to add to my library. I enjoy reading. I'm not someone who watches toxic television. Um, a new book, We Should All Be Millionaires, by an author that I had never heard of before, and I was grateful for the gift. Um, like I said, hang out in more elevated circles. You know, when I was younger, uh, my taste in men was the gun toting, <laughs> Timberland wearing, you know, uh, men who just weren't, um, men who wound up. Uh, I could have been in some uh, very dangerous, I was in one very dangerous situation uh, and I could have been in another and it could have ended very differently for me. So I had to change my taste in men. Um, my last, my previous relationship, I was engaged to a lawyer. Uh, I should have never accepted the ring. I knew I wasn't um, gonna go forward with it, but I completely sabotaged that relationship. Um, I discovered in therapy that I'm actually a runner. She's a runner. She's a track star. I have detachment issues. I have detachment issues. I had to learn that. Um, at this point in this stage of my life, I will detach in a heartbeat. If it's not working for me, if it's not serving me, I detach because it elite, it immediately makes room for something better to come in, for something new, um, for something that I feel may be actually more suited for me. It makes room for it to come in. Um, so I don't 
uh, regret that and I don't spin the block at all. Um, I pray for a reform thug. <laughs> Someone who understands both sides of life, you know, so. But yeah, everything that you're doing needs to serve a greater purpose. And if you're unsure of what your purpose is, then your job is to sit with yourself so you can figure that out. I'm going to end the live stream here. This was one hour. Again, I apologize that I started 30 minutes late. Uh, the entire audio, again, will be uploaded to my um, my podcast. So make sure you are subscribed and listening. The links are in my bio. Uh, it's going to take me a second to strip the audio. And then the replay, uh, the visual replay, will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So. Thank you so much. If you are watching or listening to the replay, uh, leave me some comments. Let me know uh, what you thought of this stream. There will be much more now that I've figured out finally how to. I was so frustrated. Oh, I was frustrated. I, I think I kind of figured this out a little bit better. So, yeah, there'll be much more. Hit your post notifications. Uh, if I am scheduling a stream, I'll post about it in my Instagram story. So make sure you're following me on IG at Purpose Not Permission. My account is verified, so you'll easily be able to find it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Outlier for Purpose, uh, at formerly known as Twitter, at Outlier for Purpose. Uh, I'll make an announcement there. Also check the community tab on my YouTube page. I provide a variety of content on all social media platforms. Make sure you're checking all of that out. Uh, my YouTube shorts. Uh, I also, oh, my IG just ended. All right. So I'll save the video and decide whether or not I want to upload it to IG. I probably won't. Um, maybe just some reels I'll clip up. Maybe, maybe I have to think about it and see. Um, but yeah, make sure you are watching my content in all the spaces, all social media platforms. Again, this is something I'm a little camera shy, believe it or not. Um, I'm not shy to talk and share my mindset, you know, and share my thoughts and opinions. But for whatever reason, I'm camera shy. This Internet energy is dark and hot and heavy. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but I'm getting used to it, you know. So just bear with me, guys. Uh, and thank you for thank you for watching. What else? Was there one more thing I was going to say? There was, but I forgot. Oh, if you join uh, the Purposeful Tribe, again, make sure that everything that you're doing is actually serving a purpose. As the channel grows and as um, the followers grow and as there is more engagement, um, I will be growing a Purposeful Tribe. Right now, you can join. Uh, there is a monthly fee. It's listed on the join button. So just click the link. It's uh, pinned in the comments and in the description box. If you join the Purposeful Tribe, you can communicate with me directly through IG DMs. Uh, you can send me three IG DMs per month that I'll respond to. And you'll also get priority reply to your comments underneath my videos. All right. Uh, in addition to getting member shout out, and you'll also have a member badge. So you can communicate with me directly. Once you join uh, the Purposeful Tribe, otherwise I do not respond to DMs um, at all. Uh, it's too overwhelming. Again, I run every facet of my social media in addition to actually creating all of my content, all my cooking videos. I do all my editing. I'm the cameraman. I, I am it from soup to nuts, right? I enjoy it. I love the creative process, but it is a lot. So unfortunately, um, I do not, I'm not afforded the opportunity to respond uh, to random DMs. But again, if you join the Purposeful Tribe, you will have access to me uh, for three messages per month per person who joins. So that's a way that you can communicate with me and reach out to me. Other than that, um, again, thank you all for joining Love, Travel, and Manifest. Live your life for purpose without asking anyone else for permission. And in case no one told you today, I love you. Honestly, I love you because I love myself. I love you with agape love. I love people and I want the best for people the same way that I want the best for myself. I would not be someone who is here 
uh, sharing my raw, authentic thoughts and opinions in the way that I am, where my words really are not minced. If I didn't love people and want to see the best for people and want people to elevate, I would be coddling you and telling you whatever it is that you wanted to hear to make you happy, especially us women. Ladies, it starts with you. When you pick up your self-esteem and realize your self-worth, ladies, you will not accept less. Anyone who uh, is beating your self-esteem down doesn't love themselves and they don't want to see you do well. You need to understand that. Um, anyone who doesn't want to give you the best, ladies, doesn't care for you. They don't care for you at all. And ladies, again, I want to reiterate. Men are very easy. Men aren't complex creatures, ladies. They don't want a lot. A man will show you through action how he feels about you, how he, uh, whether or not he even likes you. Listen to what the men say on the internet and how they actually treat the women that they actually like and what they do for the women whom they actually like. If he does not like you, He's going to sell you a bill of goods, give you all kinds of suggestions, talk you to death. Word salad is what I call it. Someone who actually likes you, number one, they aren't going to let you go to be pursued or courted or dated or possibly get into a relationship with anyone else. They are not going to want uh, you to chase them because they understand that that's not a woman's job. Um. And they are going to pursue you relentlessly through action without caring about what anyone else has to say if they actually like you and if they actually want you and if they have a healthy relationship with their ego and they're not trying to impress their friends and or the world. So I just want to be clear about that, ladies. A lot of you ladies, you know, with these questions and these poor men and how do they think and how they they, they show you. There is no mystery. Men have very little mystique to them, ladies. Very little. Very little discretion. Very little mystique. They talk more than women do to each other and all over this internet. Listen to them. They tell you who they are. All you have to do is listen. So again, love, travel, manifest, live your life for purpose without asking anyone else for permission. Uh, in case no one told you today, I love you and I will be checking in with you soon. Again, make sure you turn on your post notifications. I'll be going live again a few more times this week. I think I like this setup. So we'll see how the audio turns out. All right, guys. Thank you.